The year was 1898, and the world was largely unaware of a remote region in the Kenyan savanna known as Tsavo. This obscurity changed dramatically when the construction of a British railway became the scene of a chilling phenomenon. Two male lions emerged from the wilderness and began what seemed like a spree of terror, consuming 135 Indian laborers responsible for erecting the railway halting the project for nine long months. The event captivated the interest of the public, who saw in these lions an inexplicable bloodlust, a dire manifestation of nature's untamed fury. This narrative, initially propagated by Colonel John Henry Patterson, an Irish hunter who eventually killed the pair, held sway for decades. As his book, The Man-Eaters of Tsavo and Other East African Adventures, captured imaginations across the globe. Patterson was not only venerated, but became wealthy, leveraging this once inconceivable tale into a small fortune. Yet, Patterson's encounter with these infamous lions did not conclude with their deaths. He capitalized further on their notoriety by selling them to the Field Museum in Chicago for a substantial $5,000. At the museum, they remain a permanent exhibit, attracting visitors who relish in sharing proximity to symbols of a notorious legend. However, it was not merely the spectacle that these lions provided, but the scientific intrigue, offering researchers at the museum a chance to dissect the myths from reality. The drive to understand why these particular lions resorted to attacking humans led Bruce Patterson, a devoted zoologist, to delve into the forensic details locked within the skeletal remains of these animals. Through meticulous study, bolstered by modern advancements such as 3D printing technology, the team unveiled a grim truth veiled by stories of savagery and spite. Instead of attributing the men's deaths to an innate ferocity, the researchers detected the true culprits, severe dental abscesses. These infections rendered the lion's typical hunting practices untenable, forcing them to adapt by preying on the weakest option available, humans populating the railway camp. This revelation contradicted long-held theories suggesting environmental factors, like a drought reducing available prey, had propelled the lions to target humans. In contrast to the embellished and graphic accounts by J.H. Patterson, portrayed the lions as enjoying the sound of human bones crunching. The study found no anatomical evidence supporting a bone-consuming habit akin to hyenas. Instead, the dental wear patterns resembled that of captive lions fed meat without bones, debunking the myth of their gory appetite. Moreover, microscopic analysis of the fossils revealed extensive tooth decay invisible without the benefits of current equipment. A phenomenon common among carnivores, these abscesses led to debilitating pain, incapacitating the lions from overpowering their typical prey like zebras. Therefore, the human laborers, abundantly present and significantly more vulnerable, became the easier choice for survival. Beyond the immediate physical challenges, Patterson, the zoologist, articulated the territorial dynamics at play, noting that the railway encampments sliced through existing lion territories, exacerbating confrontations. He emphasized that injured lions are notably more threatening, driven by survival instincts sharpened under distress. Contrary to the public perception that lions habitually prey on humans, this incident in Savo stands as a rare anomaly in the species' behavioral patterns. This remarkable episode not only offers a poignant reminder of the complexities in predator-prey dynamics, but also reflects the enduring human fascination with confronting the unknown. The Savo lion's legacy persists, entwining scientific investigation with the timeless allure of mythic intrigue, gradually demystified yet eternally captivating.